Okay, in this step we're going to start doing our main wiring and we're going to install um, the components that are going to live on the electronic sled, which is this part here from the clear plastic uh, parts. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, for now I'll talk about the other things I've gathered here. Uh, the power pigtail, um, which is what our AC adapter will plug into here and give us uh, power to the crow box. This is a, a full set of um, 10 centimeter or 4 inch um, DuPont wires. Uh, for what we're doing here, the wiring, uh, we're going to use only the male to male connectors. But and I've got my whole whole kit here. Um, of course, your Arduino Uno board, um, which ideally you've already loaded with um, the Crowbox operating system software. Uh, if you haven't done that yet, you should stop and go do that first. Um, everything from here on is just easier if um, the software is already programmed onto the board. So um, if you need instructions for that, they're available at thecrowbox.com. We've got our little miniature 170 point breadboard, uh, terminal block, um, two pin, five millimeter terminal block, and then of course this little PCB mount button. This is the six millimeter type. Um, you may have a 12 millimeter type, which will involve a slightly different installation, but no big deal. Um, I have here some nylon standoffs that I'm going to use to um, attach my Arduino to the. Uh, these three screw holes in the um, sled. Uh, if you don't have standoffs, you can find um, another method to mount your Arduino that makes sense to you. You can use double-sided sticky tape. Uh, you can use hot glue if you want. Um, I, I think standoffs are the best solution, but um, there are other appropriate solutions available. Um, I'm sure that you can probably figure out how to get your Arduino to stick to the board. We'll need some electrical tape, scissors, and uh, I have um, a small screwdriver here with the with the bit that drives these small nylon screws that I'm going to use to put the Arduino on. Um, I also have some uh, some bent needle nose pliers here that are just sometimes make it easier to push some of these Dupont wire pins in. And you also need a wire stripper. Um, I use this kind of crab type stripper, but any kind will do. And um, we're also going to use a little bit of hot glue on this step. Um, so you want to have your glue gun nearby and, and ready to go. So um, that's everything we need except for the actual wiring chart, which you can download from thecrowbox.com and print out. Um, and so what we're going to do as we install components and run wires is just check these off one at a time um, uh, so that we know what we've done and what we haven't done. So you want to have that nearby. And with that, we will get started. First thing we're going to do is get some of our components installed to the sled, uh, as it's called. And uh, I'm going to do this over a piece of cardboard just because it's much easier for you to actually see this part, uh, which is tr almost transparent, if I have it on a uh, darker color than my, my little cutting mat here. So the first thing that I want to do is get my um, Arduino installed. Um, and the uh, well, we should pr probably talk about the correct orientation of the sled first. So um, you'll notice that... Um, there is a notch right here in this side of the um, sled. You want to have that notch to the right. And then there are three um, bolt holes cut into the sled here. Um, and you want to have those in sort of the bottom left quadrant here. So um, it's notch at the right, screw holes on the left, screw holes facing you down, not, not up here. So if your screw holes are up top like these are, then your sled just needs to be flipped over. So I am going to start by putting in my nylon standoffs. This is where you would uh, either double-sided tape or hot glue your Arduino to the board depending on what you've chosen uh, as a way to attach yours if you're not using standoffs. So now um, I've got my standoffs on here, and we'll discuss the orientation of the Arduino. Um, your Arduino Uno board um, is going to install, obviously, right here where I put my standoffs, and uh, this metal box with the USB connector uh, down into the left. So um, I'm going to go ahead and attach this with some nylon screws that fit these standoffs. And I'm only going to put screws in the top two holes of the UNO board. And that is because um, 
there is not enough room with this uh, pin header here to put a, um, a screw into this screw hole here. You'd have to actually uh, put the um, standoffs in in a different way. And um, I find that uh, two screws is perfectly adequate for holding um, this Arduino in place, so long as we have this third standoff underneath it to provide some strain relief when we push connectors into it. Okay, so now that the Arduino is on, we can talk a little bit about the breadboard. Okay, so here's our miniature 170 point breadboard that we're going to be using. Um, uh, there is one uh, major feature on these I'd like to discuss. Um, this one doesn't have the feature, but some of these small breadboards, depending on where you get them, um, the uh, rows and columns will be uh, lettered and numbered. So it would be A, B, C, D, E across the top, and then one, two, three, four, and so on down the side, um, which is obviously a tool that makes it easier for you to refer to a specific um, uh, tie point or hole, as they're called in the breadboard. Um, you know, where B t B3 would be A, B, and then down 3 to here. Um, now, the breadboard I'm holding in my hand doesn't have those molded in letters, but we're still going to use that system um, to refer to um, where to place wires. And we'll go over this again when we're actually placing wires. Right now we're just putting the breadboard uh, onto the uh, sled. But um, it is important if you do have those letters and numbers molded in to make sure you orient your breadboard so the letters are across the top, numbers down the side. Um, another good way to do that, at least with the ones I've seen, is to make sure that um, this little notch here and this little notch here are up and to the left respectively. So um, now we're going to put the breadboard right here next to our Arduino and about that close. I mean it's less than a finger width, maybe a pinky's width away. And, um, the way to get the breadboard installed is to simply peel from the back the adhesive and just kind of gently press it into place. There we go. Now I didn't get mine perfectly straight, but that's not a big deal. Um, but uh, it does need to be where it is on the on the sled um, because of the uh, the short, relatively short length of all of the wiring that we're using. So this will just make m many of our connections uh, easier to put in. So now that we have our um, Arduino board installed and our breadboard mounted, um, we can start uh, getting ready to do some wiring. Okay, actually before we put any wiring in, um, there are two physical components that we need to put into the breadboard. Uh, the first is this terminal block, the 5 millimeter 2 pin terminal block. And the other is this tiny tiny button that we use to select the training phase. Um, so if we have a look at our wiring chart here, the first entry is for the training button and it's designed to sit on rows 7 and 9. So, and to the farthest right we can get it. So, if we look here at my breadboard, um, I've got these these two pins here into the rightmost uh, holes on the breadboard. Um, and notice that um, <clears throat> the correct orientation is to have uh, the, the uh, pins for the switch actually coming out of the side of the switch. So if you have it like this, this is the incorrect way, where if you look at the side of the switch, you see no pins are coming out of that side. So just give it a 90 degree turn, you want the pins coming out of the side of it. And um, now this top right pin is currently in row one, so we can just count down two, three, four, five, six, seven. And push that into place, we can see that this um, this button is large enough that it actually spans one gap in the breadboard. So rows 7 and 9. Okay, so our training button is in now. The um, terminal block is, is easier to install. You just see it has two pins and these go as bottom right on the board, the breadboard as you can get them. And just press that into place. Now, those are the only two fixed components we need to add to the breadboard. So now we can uh, discuss getting down to wiring. Okay, so I've got my mail-to-mail -mail DuPonts here, and then my little wiring guide. And uh, looking here, looks like we're going to do gutter power first. So um, these first two wires, and I'll, I'll probably change this chart after this video so that these two are connected. 
Um, I like to keep these as a pair uh, just because it's a little bit neater for the wiring. So um, I suggest uh, that you peel off a connected uh, pair of red and brown, just like this. Keep those together. Um, and uh, I'll show you how we're going to do our first wiring. So there is one issue here, and the issue is that there's no good way for me to shoot this um, on video where you can see everything that's happening. So um, that's part of the idea behind having a wiring guide for this as well, so that you can um, get the critical information from your wiring guide and just kind of a more general sense of what's going on from the video of what I'm doing. Um, sim simply because it's really difficult, especially once we get several pairs of wires onto this breadboard, to see what's going on down there. Um, as much as I can, I'll lift this up close to the camera, um, but that's only going to be useful for, for so long. So what we're going to do here is we're going to run um, a connector from this set of pins here to this set here so that we get more uh, power. See, power is going to come in through this terminal block here when we plug in our pigtail. And uh, if we didn't jump this sp space here, we'd only have these three pins available for power and for ground. So we're going to give ourselves uh, four more pins by, um, by jumping over that what I call gutter in the breadboard, which is this vertical uh, slot. So uh, what you want to do here is you want to take the, the brown wire and put it in the, the uh, lowest pin, lowest uh, hole in the breadboard high point they're also called and then the red one one uh, hole away one gap away so now according to the um, the uh, wiring chart here these are F17 down here and F15 so if you went A B C D E F and then down 15 16 17 um, you'll see and those just jump parallel right over the board to connect themselves to um, uh, E15 and E17. And then you can sort of squish these together just a little bit to train the wire, um, just so that it's more vertical and up out of the way. So now that we've done that, we can mark off that we've got the gutter power connected. So now we're going to get into using individual wires. Um, and um, I used to have a strict color coding scheme for this. Um, but there are only a handful of connections, as you can see here. Um, so the only real reason to use colored wires, color-coded wires, would be for uh, making sure that every crow box is exactly the same for troubleshooting. So um, we've kind of gotten away from that. So you can just peel off the next available wire. In this case, is orange. And I'm on this wire here. This is per trail from breadboard F1 to Uno 2. And what that means, when you see Uno and a number behind it, that means you're going to be connecting to one of the Arduino Uno pins and you can see those are numbered from here starting at zero and moving up. But those are all labeled on the, on the Uno so you shouldn't have any trouble. So let's see, breadboard F1 to Uno 2. So let's see about that. I'll do this one up close. So this is A, B, C, D, E, F and we're already in row 1 so that's the correct space for that wire. And it's said to connect to Uno 2 which if I look over here I can see is 0, 1, 2. So 0, 1, 2. So that connection is made and I can strike that one off. Get another wire here. And this says connect breadboard F2 to breadboard D17. So we already know this is F1 because we just plugged into it. So F2 will be right below it. I'll push that there, and then D17. Uh, we know that 17 is the lowest row in the um, breadboard, so that kind of makes things easier. When you see 17, you know you're at the very bottom of the breadboard. Um, that's also, for what it's worth, that's our ground rail. Um, so this, this wire here is going to ground at pin uh, D17, so A, B, C, D. So right up against where that other pin is. So that's checked off. So now we're connecting uh, training wires 
that means wires that are uh, associated with this training button here. So I'm just going to peel the next wire off of my ribbon. Breadboard F7 to Uno 4. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, which ends up being right next to the training switch, the top left corner of the training switch. And that goes to Uno 4, which is pin 4 on our Arduino Uno. So that one is in. Done. Next wire off the ribbon. Breadboard F9 to breadboard G17. So the last one we put in was F7, so I know that this is F8 and this is F9. Well, and then I drop my wire. So F7, this is the one we have installed here. So F8, F9, which ends up being the bottom left corner of the training switch. And that goes to breadboard G17, which we know is going to be on the bottom, the ground rail here. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So next to the wire that's installed there. Right there. All right. So we're getting down to it here. Now this is uh, this last um, set of wires probably also should be marked like this, and, I, and I'll amend this sheet so that by the time you're able to download it, um, uh, you'll see it this way. But um, I'm going to recommend again that these be a connected pair of wires, and also since they're carrying power and ground, um, I like to use red and brown for that. So I'm actually going to peel my way into the ribbon like I just did and get myself. Um, a connected pair of red and brown wires. So breadboards, breadboard A15 and A17 go to Uno 5 volt and Uno ground. So I'm going to put the red wire in A15, which is this first column, and this is 15 here, and the brown in 17, which is at the very bottom of the breadboard. Now, we know that red is carrying power because of the way we've installed these wires. So the red wire is the one that wants to go into the Uno 5 volt, which you'll see uh, over here um, opposite, on the, on the header pins opposite the side that we've already plugged some wires into. And I can see 5 volt right there. I'm going to plug into it. And then the brown wire goes just below that into ground, G and D. So there's that. So now um, that's everything there is to do um, with respect to wiring up um, the breadboard to the Arduino. Now we do have some wires uh, coming out of our crow box that we need to um, get connected to. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute here. That's these connections down here. Uh, looks like five more connections to make. Um, but for now we're going to um, install the power pigtail onto our terminal block here and uh, set up some strain relief for that and then we'll talk about getting this installed into um, the crow box. Okay, now we're going to put in our power pigtail and um, that's got very short uh, strip leads on it so I'm going to separate these and I'm going to strip them give myself a little bit more to work with, not much more, but maybe double double what you see here Okay, so these leads, these bare leads from the pigtail, are going to go into these screw terminals on the side. <clears throat> and so, let's see, I got the wrong bit here, so I'm going to change out for a bit that fits those. And loosen these screws on the top of this terminal connector all the way. Well, not all the way, but you know, I don't think they'll come out. Um, they should stay in, but loosen them a good way. you'll see that that's opened those terminals up. So the normal way, I, would, I don't know if it's normal, but the way that uh, most installations will work is that the pigtail wire that is black goes into the terminal at the base of the, the one that's at the base of the breadboard. 
So it's worth looking at our power adapter to make sure. So uh, in this case, the adapter that I'm holding uh, shows that the center pin is positive. You can see that this little plus sign points to the center pin of this diagram. That's what's called a center positive plug. Um, and I think that's the most common uh, if you were to just go and buy one of these 5 volt 2 amp adapters off of you know Amazon or eBay. But it's worth checking because um, there are um, center negative adapters. And if you have a center negative adapter, then you'll uh, do the opposite of what I'm showing here. So for our adapter, which is center positive, I'm going to plug the positive wire, the red wire, into um, the uh, terminal that's on the right when I hold the sled in my hand this way. Um, if you have a center negative, then you'll do this backwards, just like this, to where the red wire is at the bottom, black wire is at the top. But you probably have a center positive adapter, which means that you'll put the connectors in, the wires in just like this. So we want to put those in to those spaces in the terminal block and gently screw these down to feel some resistance. And then again, gently until I feel some resistance, which means my wires are captive in there. And you want to make sure you don't push these in too far. If you clamp them down on the insulation instead of on the bare wire, you might not make a connection. Um, and now I'm going to support this terminal block by holding it at both ends and now I'm going to give these screws a nice firm tightening. If you don't support the terminal block you'll end up twisting it out of the breadboard. So that's the reason to hold on to it. Um, so I've got my, heat, my hot glue gun here and it's been heating up um, and it looks like it's ready to go. So I'm just going to arrange for some strain relief here. So I'm going to position Position my wire here, this pigtail, and then uh, I'm going to, actually I'm going to use clamps for this, I think, because I don't want to hold it while the glue dries. If you've been through this whole process, you're probably tired of holding things while glue dries too. Going again, clamp it down right here. And I'm just going to use me some hot glue. over the wire and onto the acrylic on both sides. This way it'll be okay if something ends up pulling on um, this uh, pigtail. It won't uh, if anything ends up pulling on the pigtail, it won't pull the wires out of my terminal block. Um, so that's going to function as strain relief for us. And I'm going to leave these here just until the hot glue cools so I can move on. Just a couple minutes, I suppose. Okay, so that's had plenty of time to cool off. So now we have our pigtail attached pretty well in a way where if it gets twisted or pulled, it doesn't transfer that force to here which would yank these wires out of the terminal block or yank the terminal block out of the um, breadboard. So with that done our sled is complete. Okay so now we have a, a sled that's fully wired up um, with the power pigtail ready to go and then uh, we have our crow box which has had the servo, the uh, perch uh, switches and the coin sensor installed. So that leaves us with these three sets of wires coming out of the crow box that need to be connected. Um, we also have our wiring uh, chart here, which I folded in half because now we're on to this section, connections from the crow box. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is the servo. And before we do the servo, we're actually going to make our own little connector here. So if we look at the uh, tail coming out of the servo here, uh, it has... Uh, orange, red, and brown wires um, on a uh, on a three uh, hole connector here. And so what we want to do is go to our DuPonts here and conveniently enough we should be able to find uh, a trio of brown, red, and orange wires connected. So I'm going to peel these guys off of the DuPont. And there we have it. So 
We're going to build a little connector here which will make it easier for us to attach and disconnect the servo um, should we ever need to do that. What I'm going to do is I, I have arranged the uh, brown, red, and orange wires like this, match them up to the uh, same color coming out of the servo connector, just plug those in like that, and then I'm going to bind only my end of, the, of these wires with some electrical tape. And by that I mean I'm going to basically put tape where I'm pinching right now. I'm not going to tape these two connectors together. Um, I'm just going to tape uh, these three um, DuPont connectors into something that resembles a permanent connector. So I just need a little electrical tape for that. So as best I can, I'm going to stretch this tape as I apply it. And don't want to let it overlap the servo connector. Again, we're not trying to tape these together. We're trying to tape these up in a way that we can disconnect later if we have to. But that makes these three wires hold together uh, in their own little uh, type of uh, little sort of connector. So now, looking at our little wiring chart, let's bring these uh, wires up and ignore the pigtail for now. We're not going to be dealing with power until later. So I'm going to put this lead pretty close like this. And then. Um, there are specific connections here. It says brown goes to B17 on the breadboard, and red goes to B15 on the breadboard. Orange goes to Uno 9. So, red into B15 is here. And apologies, this is because of the way this is set up, I can't lift the crow box. And the bread and the sled up to give you a good shot of this. So I'm just going to have to go with what we have here. So the last thing I need to do is take the orange lead and run that over to Uno 9, which is here where I'm pointing. So I'm going to have to peel the orange a little bit more away from the red in order to get that connection. Just like that. And now I'll just line the wire colors up correctly orange, red, brown just like this and plug into our little makeshift connector and that's the servo taken care of so I can mark that one off now the coin sensor calls for either of the leads from the coin sensor to go to Uno 3 doesn't matter which so I'll just pick one now I know this pair here uh, because I'm actually looking inside my crow box I can see that this pair of wires goes to the coin sensor so one of these needs to be connected to UNO pin 3, which is between the two existing connections we've made. So, um, in this case, those have twisted, so I'm going to have to square them off to make room for one more square connector between them. Okay, that's connected, so I can mark that one off. And the other one goes to UNO ground, which is a little um, particular. Um, that's over here on this row of header pins, you'll see that there's actually two pins marked G and D. Uh, one of them we've used and one we haven't, so we're going to use the second one just like that for the coin sensor. So that's taken care of, I'll mark it off. Now the perch. Now we have two pairs of, of wires here. So when I did this, I know that I ran the purple and gray, which is in my left hand, to one switch, this one in particular. And I know that I ran the blue and green to another switch, which is this one. So the way that we want to plug these in, we'll go around some of these wires that are here. These go into column G1 and column H1. And all that means is get one over, the, we'll ignore the blue pair for now. So we're dealing with the um, gray and purple, which again is this switch. And I want to plug them in right next to these two wires here, one over the other, just like that. And then same for the remaining pair. Um, now this is probably um, the most likely place to make a mistake in wiring um, and if a mistake is made um, you'll have one of two problems when you go through the video for um, testing the training protocols. Uh, either your perch switches will do nothing or your crow box will open and close constantly because it thinks one of these switches is always pressed. So um, it's just uh, important to make sure that you um, know which pair comes from which switch and uh, 
and uh, get them plugged in in vertical columns in this in this section here. So with those marked off, that's all the wiring we have to do. So um, now that uh, everything's all wired up, we can um, go on to the video that talks about how to uh, power up the crow box and do all of our system tests. And um, once we make sure that all the systems work as we expect, then uh, we can get to closing the box up and putting it to work.